it's me, Mike O'Keefe, and I'm on a... No, no I'm... It's, I, don't, I wasn't the ghost of Christmas present? Which one is the Know Me Better Man one from the Muppet Christmas Carol? That's how I know a, a Christmas Carol. It's from the Muppets. That's how I get most of my information about classic stories. It's from the Muppets. Uh, so big ups to my high school uh, where all the teachers were Muppets. I want to thank them. And I want to thank you. Episode 21. We got a hot one. Mark Roebuck, one of my oldest and bestest pals, uh, is on the show. He Skyped in. We did another Skype one. I'm not going to... I'm not going to beat you over the head with the Skype episodes. Uh, but Mark lives in Tucson, Arizona because he's uh, on the lam from society. And so he lives in Tucson. And he was a guy when I started this. It was it was to talk to more of my friends about more of our lives together. And he's one of the first guys I wanted to have on the show. And the only way it was to get him was to Skype him on in. So that's exactly what they did. Mark writes for the hard times which I would liken to the Punk Rock Onion. He also writes for Hard Drive, which is their gamer site. So go read all that. He's on Twitter, at Mark underscore Roebuck. He's probably one of the funniest people I've ever met, and he and I jive together like peanut butter and KY jelly, baby. We really get in there, and we have a nice time when we chat. So I appreciate him being on the show, and I appreciate you guys listening. I really enjoy uh, hearing from you guys, and I think more people should hear about our show. So if you're listening, if you're enjoying tweet out about the show, Facebook about the show, Instagram about the show. I really appreciate it. I really would. Spread the word. Spread the wealth. Also, as I've told you guys time and time again, if you leave a five-star review on iTunes, regardless of what it says, I'm going to read it. So we got a new five-star review from Uberez8. Here we go. Multiple idiots, more like multiple great guests. Am I right, fellas? See, I read it. So there you go. Five stars. I'll read whatever you put on there. So thanks a lot. I got some shows coming up. I'd love to see you guys at February 23rd, Traverse City, Michigan, the jewel of Northern Michigan. Come on out. Studio Anatomy. It's going to be a fun time. Mal's opening up for me. So if you wanted to see what Mal looks like in person, uh, get on that. It's going to be a very fun show. And then the next weekend, March 2nd, I'm in the Steel City Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I can't wait. I love Pittsburgh. One of my favorite places in the world. I'm at Building Bridges uh, Comedy or Burning Bridges. They're not building them. They're burning them. They're burning those suckers down. Burning Bridges Comedy Club was inside a bar called Ham Bones, which is also uh, what I have called my penis from time to time. So come out. Burning Bridges Comedy Club, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, March 2nd. Follow us on Instagram, on Twitter, at Multiple Idiots. Follow me at the Mike O'Keefe. Tweet about the show. I want to hear from you. If you got any questions you want me to ask, I'm looking to spice things up. If you got anything that you want me to ask these people who are sitting across from me or Skyping in with me, let me know. We'll spice it up. I want to hear from you. This isn't just your journey or this is just my journey. This is just your journey. This is our journey. Let's take it together and let's make the Baloney Boys the best we can be. I want the Baloney Boys to be so strong that we take out ISIS (laughs) or at the very least (laughs) the police department in a small college town. Either one, either ISIS or the Bloomington, Illinois Police Department. (laughs) I'm coming after you. You decide. But we need <laughs> we need your help. Let us know what we can be doing. Let us know what questions you want to hear. Thank you so much for listening to this. You're the best. Let's do this together. Take my hand. Take it. Like in a fun way. Nah, it's not creepy. I'll, I'll, fine. I'll wipe my hand off on my jeans. You know, here we go. Take my hand. Here we go. And here we go. <laughs> Roback, Roback of the sea. Hey, what's up, buddy? How's it going? <laughs> Hello, Mike. This is your guest, Mark Roback, who apparently now goes by Roback of the sea. You're of well, you live in the desert now, which is why we're doing this. This is the second episode we've done on on. 
Skype or a, a Google Hangout, rather. We're, this is yeah. uh, brought. This episode, like all episodes, is brought to you via the internet. Mm. I I like to put these on the internet. You guys have sponsorships on the show already. That's fantastic. Uh, we do, but <laughs> not really. Uh, the internet. I heard that. Yeah, the internet doesn't sponsor us, but we do oh. use the internet. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay, cool. So this is like pirate radio. This is exactly like pirate radio. Uh, I'm cool. the Nick Frost of this situation. Was he in that movie? Yeah. Oh, there was an actual movie called Pirate Radio. I don't know if I saw that one. You shouldn't have. I like, I, it was a good I like, I, I, I that, Yeah, I, that impressed in my brain. I figured maybe you told me that. Maybe someone else did. I don't know. I can't uh, even remember if Paige's fake dad is in the movie. I don't care, you know? But uh, do you like the one that pump up the volume, the Kevin, you know, I, yeah, Christian Slater one? No, I don't, a, I, like, I don't like oh, Christian a, Slater. And that's I, like a really good pirate radio movie, though, is the thing. I, we don't talk about Christian Slater on this podcast. It is one Ooh. of the biggest no-nos. Do you oh, want to know why? God. No, uh, Tell me, please. Because I saw Heather's, and I didn't like the way his hair fell. I didn't enjoy that. And okay. so we don't talk about him. And we also don't talk about giant long leather jackets. That's fair. I'm sorry I'm not there to read the room. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, you're all the way in Arizona because well, everyone knows why you moved to Arizona. You were a you were a convicted felon numerous times over. And every time And I misunderstood the legal system. I thought this would help me. <laughs> <laughs> well, every time you would get locked up, there would be a pretty lady who would be the intake officer and she'd take your picture. And then eventually you guys fell in love and then you moved to Arizona in a trailer park and there was this guy, he was like a furniture guy. He sold uh, furniture. He had commercials on TV and then he had a bunch of kids and then you stole a bunch of his kids. I it, it, I only stole one of the kids, and also that's the movie Raising Arizona. Ah, shit. <laughs> yeah. I hate when I but, mix up you and Nicolas Cage. You know, that's one thing. I, I, I We can talk about that as much as like, unlike Christian Slater on this show, we can do that. Um, but you know what? Uh, it, it's actually less like Raising Arizona. It's more like we kind of did a Lost in America, which I, I, I wouldn't be comfortable uh, throwing that out there. I get, I get, you know, sometimes you try to make a reference and you're just like, just working backwards. And you have to explain what that means and then why you said that. But um, Expl I, we, yeah. we can talk about it here. I did a lost, we tried, we did a lost in America. Explain what happened to the people with your life. And then we'll get back into more of our history together as men okay. who would drink and dance on bars. Yes. Some of us would both drink. You danced on the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Craig and Max. What's up, buddy? Hey, hey, thanks, man. Thanks for talking about me on your show. <laughs> hey, thanks for bringing me up. I really appreciate that. <laughs> As a reference for uh, two people. I love you. I love, I love Craig. Craig is uh, great. the best, um, man. Uh, but no, so Mike and I met uh, while we were both in Lansing, Michigan, the capital of the capital. I don't know. Um, we were state senators. Doing, doing, <laughs> we met. We were the two representatives. Uh, senators, whichever whichever one is two per state. Uh, this is a political show, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is talking politics with Mike and a dumb guy. That's that's the show. Listen, me and Mike were both presidents of Michigan when we met, <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's no, why. We, uh, <laughs> yeah. And so, um, uh, so, so my thing for me in our history is just that. So, yeah. So, uh, I I got married uh, about a, about a year and a half ago now, and uh, we both, uh, my wife Taylor and I, are just people that had been in Michigan, uh, you know, we, for a long time. We certainly wanted to get out there, and so we sort of did the thing where we didn't know where we were going to end up. So we bought ourselves a camper and just kind of uh, took the long way to nowhere, and then uh, <laughs> the dust what a settled, perfect, and now we. <laughs> what a perfect way to put it. We took a long yeah. way to nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so the dust settled and here we are living in uh, Tucson, Arizona now, not, not in the camper We are renting a, a little place here now And that is kind of the plan for the foreseeable future now But that was, you know, we left Michigan in the middle of July And arrived in Arizona at the beginning uh, around, the, around two months later in September So we took a few, a few months there Where we were just kind of bipping and bopping Throughout the flyover, as they call it It was crazy when you guys were bipping and bopping It was pretty insane uh, It was but wild, man Like. Uh, Go. <laughs> say your Sorry, thing. your show. I'll, I'll, um, <laughs> Please just, say your um, thing. <laughs> I will say my thing. Fuck. Now we've halted the show and I forgot what it even was. No, it was just that <laughs> it was it was really wild. And those two months feel like, you know, like that can be disproportionate. Like, oh, the one month I worked at this job was the longest month of my life. Like this was like this two months. Yeah. 
felt like a year, even still does when I think back at it of like, this was like, we went to the, we kind of went for the retirement lifestyle, but not in the way that people who retire have money to buy really, really <laughs> nice campers. Yeah. You know what I mean? so oh yeah. Yeah. We were in a 1969 pop-up camper that had no, uh, you know, like bathroom or anything like that. So we were, you know, uh, it, it was the real rough, ver the, the real uh, uh, primitive version of living out of a camper. You know what I mean? Not some big tour bus looking uh, thing. But yeah. yeah, you guys so, were really roughing it there for a second. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's like it's funny. It's like any subculture. If you get on the Internet, there's there's uh, there's people that live in vans. that would say we're bullshit for being in a camper. And then, there's you know what I mean? There's always <laughs> yeah. like this hierarchy of like how roughing it you are. But like we... You know, with that, with not having, um, like, running water, we had a water tank, but we had to fill it up and, and things like that, you know, for our little rinky-dink, uh, 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 little hand-washing sink that we have, uh, you know, as far as a, uh, uh, so, like, as far as, like, a bathroom and just things like that, we were just mostly staying at campsites. Uh, so it just like being surrounded by all these people like, Ooh, look at that camp. Look at that one. And then ours was kind of just like a box that unfolded more <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> canvas. Like when it rained, we had to like go throw a tarp over it because like we weren't waterproof, like, you know, just, just, uh, not a thing you saw too many other people in the in the in the campsite doing. So yeah. it, was, it was rough, like that, but we were also sort of plugged into a grid where they gave us power and bathrooms and stuff. So that's why I say that with some trepidation because it's like, so I know there's some guy living in the woods listening to your podcast <laughs> saying, uh, you know, "Roughing it, huh? Using the public showers, huh? You know." So yeah. we're very <laughs> popular with woodsmen. We have a yeah, big yeah. survivalist base who want to know yeah. what's going to happen if and when I eventually get married. <laughs> <laughs> They're hanging on my every word, whittling, yeah. just like, oh, I hope Mikey finds someone to stand with him up there. <laughs> uh, but you, you are able to do this because you work on the internet. You write for the hard times and subsequently hard drive. Uh, yeah. Which was like, it's it's odd, though, because we, that was like one of our first things. We were like, oh, hey, we both like punk rock. That, this is back when we were surfer dudes. We met. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> living in, living the in Michigan. Co the coastal city of Lansing, Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't be more dead center on uh, what I like to call the hand that slaps Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> that's great is that is just, that really is that a that's a mikey i just made that up but we're getting t-shirts made right now oh my god yeah gotta, michigan the hand that slaps because like the kids are saying you couldn't have said that a few years ago but they're saying slaps these days now you know oh yeah oh yeah they're, slaps made a big comeback and it's, it's real hot so you were not just for bass guitars anymore it's really not it's for slapping consensually not uh, <laughs> consensual, consensual slapping Slapping mm -hmm. that two adults have agreed, hey, either we're making uh, sweet Randy love and it's uh, slapping is okay for the bottom or the face. I don't know what you're into. I don't know what our listeners are into. Consensual mm -hmm. slapping or it's, the, you know, it's one uh, gentleman challenging another gentleman to a duel, slaps him with a glove and then they duel. It's like that bit. I love. I love our wrestlers. Maybe there's some name for it. You can tell me. But in the middle of the, the, the match, like, hey, you want to do the thing where we slap each other for a couple minutes? You uh, know that? I think that's called uh, being in Japan and run out of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I love you everyone who does it, but that is what I think it is. <laughs> you want to just slap each other for yeah, a while? Just, we'll do the slap thing. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm fucking tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crank, 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 and like, well, you know, I hate to cast dispersion on your uh, <laughs> on your dice case Sekimoto's of the world, but it looks like it really hurts. Yeah, it's it's like at what cost? Like, yeah, I need a breather. You want to slap the shit out of my face for a minute? Sounds good. Kind of a lot a, better than yeah. running. <laughs> <laughs> So back when we were both in Lansing, you were uh, you were just hanging out. I was a student of, uh, of many things. I was a student at school. I was uh, yeah. more importantly, I was a student. I was really focusing on comedy at that point. The fact mm -hmm. that I didn't flunk out of school for going to open mics all the time. Uh, are you as amazed by that as I am? Uh, now that you say it, yeah, like I don't, I don't recall having that thought process at the time. But just even like even before you asked me, I was just thinking like, yeah, like he was going to school those mornings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's what I, I would do. Really connected those dots, but yeah, good on you, man. You did well. Yeah, I, uh, thank yeah. you. Well, here's here's what I would do. I would have, I would always have a ten o'clock class, 
And oh then yeah, smart. Yeah, I would stack th- like three in a row. And in college, the you know, it's you don't want to go to a bunch of classes in a, in a row because that's like mm-hmm. high school. We're not going to high school, man. It's fucking. <laughs> we got a mm-hmm. we got a beer in a cup. Blah. Um, mm-hmm. That's real. <laughs> Listen, if any of you guys are college students out there, I really apologize for that defamatory accent I did. Well, I remember, like you said, when we met, I could tell you were a student because you said, "Hi, Mark. It's nice to meet you. I've seen you a few times. I have a beer in a cup." <laughs> <laughs> And then you said yes. <laughs> That's great, Mike. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you said yes. This is a bar. They sell that here. <laughs> I said, "Well, pretty cool." I'm a student. <laughs> one of my defining factors is how I spend most of my day. <laughs> and then, uh, what was that noise? Did you just get stabbed. That was yeah. It was me going. What's up? I thought we were going into what's up. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, I thought you. Uh, I thought you were doing the beginning of a, a lifetime movie or the end of a lifetime movie where your wife yeah. gets her revenge on you. <laughs> and she's like, this show is yeah. This is improvised theater that we do right on this podcast. A we're just warming of, up. I was gonna a lot of theater of the mind. <laughs> to get the action going a here. lot of it well i do this thing on every episode where i i do a theater of the mind thing on every single show where i pretend i'm having a good time and i think it's really coming across well <laughs> very convincing yeah very i convincing. do i do a great job all the laughing wait i'm not really laughing i'm sneering at uh, oh man at the lava lamp we have in the studio anyway uh <laughs> <laughs> so we met and we both started doing a show at a place called Max. And I think if you put all the historical buildings, if there was a historical landmark society of my life, I think Max is up there with with the great barns of, you know, me coming up in comedy. We would we were there every mm-hmm. fucking week, every week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was the first place I ever went to do comedy. And then, yeah, yeah. it was yep. Big place, huge. It was the best because it was it was this thing where it was the same, and it still is. That show is still running in Lansing, and if you're out there and you're in Michigan and you're not going to Max every Monday at nine, uh, you're insane because it's it's these comics, and there's a, a built-in audience there, and it's symbiotic, and everyone's feeding off of each other, and it really is a very very magical place because. It looks like one of the places that Brad Pitt had to go to find a body in seven. <laughs> like, yeah. It is, it, is, <laughs> it is the punkest, weirdest, grossest bar. The ceiling's all fucked up. There's graffiti everywhere. Uh, I The bathroom is almost unusable. Uh, but oh, it's, yeah, yeah. But it's great, and it's, <laughs> it's the best, man. I love Max so much. It's amazing. And, I mean, like, so many – it was just so cool because, like, at first I would just do comedy wherever I, they would let me do comedy, you yeah. know. But then to also just be doing it at the place where I'm like, well, I've seen a bunch of my favorite bands here totally, on Thursday yeah. and Friday nights and shit mm-hmm. like that, you know. So that was really cool. And then, yeah, just the vibe. It just works. It can be – you know, like I, this is like every when, when you start off doing comedy, you have to get through the rough stuff, and that provided sort of like almost like the rough stuff in a in a fun way, though. Or do you know what I mean? Yeah. Where it wasn't um, like I would do these like bar shows in Flint around the same time, and that was not as endearingly wild. <laughs> do you know what oh, hundred I mean? percent, yeah. Well, it was, it was like, just like you're in the trenches so much, and I say the trenches because if you look up and see where you're actually at, it's not good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like if you look up and be like, oh shit, I'm in a bar in Clio, Michigan. I'm getting paid 20, I'm getting paid 20 bucks. I drove an hour and a half to be here. Like if you look up and see that, you're, it's, you're fucked. You know, mm-hmm. it's the mm-hmm. worst thing you can do. Uh, <laughs> but like Max was like a fun trench. We were all hanging out, you know, shaving in yeah. a mirror, whatever. I don't know what you do in a trench. Yeah, a lot of shaving stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, get gangrene. Yeah, and, then, and so I don't really necessarily recall specific. I'm sure just because it was like some night we we're all drinking. But also at some point, like you were saying, we figured out that we both we shared a, 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 alongside comedy, being youngsters, wet behind the ears comedians. We were also a little couple of punk rock kids there, weren't we? Yeah, I think it was something. Uh, as simple as just saying, "Oh, you were you look like the ran- the guy from Rancid with that hat," and then you were we're friends now. <laughs> yep, yep, because that's how that's how college students that finished college at a smaller community college that's how they talk in Lansing. Yeah, they <laughs> exclusively puke. That's all they do. Is throw <laughs> yes. up. Oh, nice reference. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep doing your Rancid hat. <laughs> But that's that was our our thing, man. And we we would go. We, we do you rem- is is it weird thinking back how many times we got drunk on a Monday? 
Follow-up question. Is it weird that I now have a show on Monday and I'm still yeah. getting drunk most Mondays? You're still going strong. Yeah. No, yeah. it's just, I mean, it would be a problem if you insisted that the show was on Mondays because that's the day you have to drink. It's, not, it's fine. It's, it's, just, the, yeah. it's just, the, just when we have shows. It's you just know? when it was. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't think any, anything of it. It's just like... <laughs> I would just buy the free drinks on a Monday. What do you yeah, want from me? Yeah, what are you going to do? You know, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just, fine, how it, it's it's just what happens. It was, yeah. it was the best, man. And then we started, how many failed podcast <laughs> ventures did we have? We could probably start a podcast covering them all. Oh that my would, God. Go my favorite one. I don't know if you remember this, but this is in my dorm room junior year. I had to move back into the dorms junior year. Because, that was odd because it's like you yeah. weren't dorm guy and then you kind of were. And I feel like a lot of people have an opposite opposite trajectory. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what happened. My, uh, yeah, <laughs> my roommate at the time was this kid, Adam, who did not go to Michigan State. He went to uh, – he just I think he just needed a place in East Lansing to buy pot and smoke it because sure. <laughs> yeah. he didn't go to class. I don't think he had a job. Uh, you said he didn't go to class, but like he was a student, just a a, a bad student, or just you don't, don't even think a student. I don't even think he was enrolled. I think he was just there. <laughs> I don't know, but he just like bought. He couldn't make rent like three months in a row, and then he mm -hmm. brought home a bong that I can only describe as half the size of me, <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> like a three foot five inch ball and i'm not seven foot like, but he had like he bought like just a giant bong and i was like, like well, you as a child it's like a child-sized michael keith bong yeah yeah like a little baby <laughs> a little baby <laughs> michael keith and i and then like i was working at a bank at the time so i was just like i can't he's gonna get smoke in my suit i have one suit i need uh -oh. to wear it like every day i'm fucking out uh -oh. here so we moved back and wow. then we had a, we tried to do a podcast of us doing audio sketches. And, That's uh, what I was going to say. Yeah. I was yeah. working on that for, for a class, uh, like an audio kind of production class. And it was, my idea was to have an audio sketch comedy show. Not a bad idea. I suppose, oh, not at if all. you know, if, if we leave it at that and my, my thinking being, you know, like I wanted to do sketches and I think I was still just, you know, I was like, I'll like super excited about what other, like what other kind of comedy can I do and things like that. So I was like, you know, a sketch show, but since it's audio, we can make it be set wherever the hell we want it. You know, yeah. like we could write stuff in outer space and it could be set in outer space. So again, like those are pretty solid jumping off points. Oh, definitely. <laughs> now, I don't know. I don't know what your recollection is of the final product, but I recently, when we were going through stuff, getting rid of most of our stuff to hit the road there, I did find an old computer and that was one of the audio files I found on it. And, oh, uh, how I did not keep that it? computer. <laughs> <laughs> you threw away the whole computer. <laughs> yeah, I could have probably took the files off it or something, but instead I lit it on fire and buried it. Uh, <laughs> I love the idea no, of it yeah. being like, I can't even use this hardware anymore. I'm done with no, it. No, <laughs> right. No, I don't. I, what am I going to, you know, what am I going to do? It is a thing where it was like, it probably some use, I, I could do this, I could lug it around or something, but it really was just like, we are also moving into a box. So yeah, just yeah. some things with use left just aren't going to, that was kind of nice, not to sidebar, but it was nice purging of things you know what was the biggest but, thing you um, threw away other than obviously this computer which featured our fantastic audio sketch show that we did yes. not even have a name for <laughs> oh oh i had a name for it i think it was at the very least it was like the working title i was saving the file as because as we know it never really came out but please can i tell you it was, it was, of course please. I'm, I'm so embarrassed it's take take the funny and run <laughs> oh get out of here that's <laughs> all right so thanks for bad. having me Mike. i gotta go <laughs> Uh, You're fucking. I hope an armadillo pisses in your mouth tonight. That's horrible. You've been to Tucson? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so commonplace. It's amazing. Oh, uh, they're always <laughs> jumping in your bedroom and tinkling. Dude, in your I mouth. can't walk down the street bobbing a fucking tumbleweed with a stick without some armadillo <laughs> leaking in my mouth. Will you play like you know that? I mean? You play that old turn of the century hoop stick game, but you do it with tumbleweeds out there. That's right. Yeah, I'm on Twitch. You can watch me do it these days. <laughs> You're on Twitch. What's your Twitch name? I'm Twitch. I'm doing the hoop thing on, on Twitch. <laughs> uh, fo guys, follow Tumble Mark sixty nine four twenty. He's doing stuff. Uh, under uh, sixty nine underscore four twenty. Oh, I apologize. Um, uh, well, you no, know, okay. you know my weird history with Tucson, right? <laughs> Uh, oh, let's pretend I don't. And you tell me and I'll react as if I didn't know it. What a great idea. Uh, and I think, <laughs> I, I don't know if I've talked about this on here, but for two spring breaks in a row, oh, three between sixth grade or fifth or sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, 
all those spring breaks, my, my fucking dad took us to a dude ranch in Tucson, Arizona. Oh, amazing. And made us ride, I- made us ride horses for a whole week. I was going to ask what you thought of it, but your usage of the word made, I think, tells me everything I need to know. It was so weird. <laughs> like, looking back we got, now. We got to ride horses. He made us ride horses. He was like, yeah, hey, what are you going to do, ride horses? There's no TVs in the room. Well, I guess I'm riding yeah. horses then. <laughs> now, I, I'm at an age where I really appreciate it's scenic out here. There's mountains. It's beautiful yeah, and all that. It's, but, it's, I mean, it is a gorgeous like, part of the country. Yeah. But did that do anything for you at that age? Like, I don't know, you know, did you appreciate the scenery? Were you just like, this is... This no, is not at all. <laughs> just checking, all right. <laughs> not at all. Well, it was like cool that it was the desert, I guess. And I would just yeah. like, would, we would go on these, vi- like these two, like two hour long trail rides on horseback. You're just kind of looking at these mountains and, and I, I guess I would imagine... Uh, what a gunfight on them would be like. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Guys hiding out and yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. yeah. The, like, long, the long rifles and the smoke. Yeah. I've seen them. You know, all the time. Western yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I yeah. wanted, I didn't want to be there. I w- actually it was f- fourth, fifth and sixth grade. Don't. Okay. Oh I, yeah. I That's want... The younger you go on that, the rougher it is, I think. Yeah. Like, yeah. Who cares about this? Yeah. yeah. Um, Sixth, seventh, eighth grade, I'm found, looking for girls. Fourth, fifth, and sixth yeah. grade, I'm looking for nothing, man. <laughs> I'm looking for an edge of a bed I can rub up against for a half a second. Mm. You can't do that on an old dusty rock. That's not how you, don't <laughs> you don't want to. Um, like running out, no, just like, sprinting in the wood, in the desert like Dean Ambrose on a fucking thing. I can't do that. Fuck that. It, it's so. Uh, it's it, that's that's like the worst way to it. Like I like the mountains because I can look look at them for like a little bit. Every day, you know what I mean. It's it's not really worth. You can't really. It's not like a camel where you go look at him a lot for two hours, and then you're good for the year. You know, I yeah. don't think it, it's it's a nice thing to just have when I walk to my car and go, yeah, fucking mountains, look at that. And then I just get in my car, you know, <laughs> cool. But I don't think it's worth a two hour trip. And that's like, I love it. It's beautiful out here, but yeah, yeah. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> and there's something too that's like I like it out here. I'm sure there's some beautiful dude ranch you went to, but coming from Michigan, did you ever kind of do like the, like do the math of like, man, we. If we, if we traveled this far to go somewhere and it was this, does that seem a little insulting? Like, <laughs> to, <laughs> you know? your, to your current hometown? Yeah, it does, honestly. But it was. It's, like if it's an hour away, sure, go to the dude ranch is yeah. all I mean, you know. But, oh, my God. Uh, yeah, I 100%. But we could have sp- gone to Cedar Point or Disney, yeah. whatever. You know, I don't know. But it's spring break and it like spring break when you're in Catholic school is always around Easter. So everything uh-huh. in Michigan in the early spring, it, it's just wet. Right. Like yeah. it's it's not an it's not good yet and this it's just beginning to get sunny, but everything's just mm-hmm. super wet. It's like forty degrees. It doesn't know <laughs> you don't know whether you need a parka yeah. or a fucking hoodie. It's miserable. Right. But yeah. To, I know, yeah. But to go anywhere, why uh why are we going to Dust City, baby? What are we doing that yeah, for? That's, yeah, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm yeah, saying. I know. Was it the same dude ranch every time? Yeah, of course it was. <laughs> okay. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know if he was trying to publish the, the Tucson guide to dude ranches. I um, think I think he had a like a loyalty plan. Like I think he bought all the vacations at the same time. So that's the only thing oh, I can yeah. think of. Why we would go to the mm-hmm. same place three years in a row. Yeah. Like it was cheaper if we got in all in at the beginning, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's smart, I guess. Yeah. And then uh, the, I'll tell you what, the, the, the year I went in sixth grade, you're not going to believe this, Mark. There was, a, there, was a, there was an older girl there. Yeah. Like they, staying in, like, was everyone have their own little house, but they're all in the same kind of thing? Yeah, one of, those, one of those deals. Like, it's your own unit, yeah. but it's, a, it's like in a circle around a big old fire pit because okay. we're going to cook beans on it. Mm-hmm, and uh, mm-hmm. we were the only two kids in the whole thing, like around our age. And, yeah, uh, okay. Yeah. And uh, there was a ballroom dance night. They would have like activities at night. And one of, one of them, they made a, they had a lady come and teach you ballroom dancing. It was mm-hmm. the fir- first time I ever danced with a girl. Was it the first? Did you dance with her? <laughs> so the then f- you, were, you were around a bunch of adults then and this was going on? Yeah. And then there's a bunch of adults just sitting around. And then me and this, uh, they make me and this uh, other 13 year old girl dance. And guess what? We didn't talk before or after it because oh, we were both man. incredibly nervous. 
That was because it was so sweet the way he told me at first. Like, and, and there was this girl, and then he said there was a ballroom dancing class, and then I danced with her. And then he filled in some of the, the gaps, and it's more like they put they put you two in a jar and shook you up. That's exactly what it was like. It's, it's, oh, man. And, and I, I hate to cast dispersions on this or, like, say, like, I know what it's like, but it was a little bit like an arranged marriage. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you know, the, uh, arranged marriage obviously is a cultural thing. I, I don't know anything about it. I'm not trying to judge them. But it felt like, oh, you're young in here. You're young in here. You guys are obviously going to have a, a, an after school special movie made about you <laughs> called mm-hmm. Dude Ranch Fingering. And so get at it. <laughs> oh, man. Dude Ranch so Fingering, then- my favorite Blink-182 album, by the way. What's that? Dude Ranch Fingering is my favorite Blink-182 album. <laughs> Tell that to your hard times buddies, you son of a bitch. All right, ass. I will. I will. The insult was unnecessary, but I'll pass it along. Hey, uh, Tell him, you fucking son of a fucking bitch. It's my um, new char- this is my new character. Uh, insults out of the side of his mouth. Guy. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just do do what you do over there. Yeah, that was, we'll see you later. You're a fucking prick, son of a bitch. Did you call you. me a fucking... Was, I'm sorry, did you just call me a fucking prick? I heard you. You just, you just started no, talking out of the no, side of your mouth. No, Mark. No, we're buddies. Been friends 10 years. Yeah, oh, you're great. Yeah, I love right. you. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, thought it was weird. Fucking yeah. idiot. This guy fucking oh. dumb. Fucking <laughs> insulting him to his face via the internet. He doesn't even fucking get it. You're, I think that's the side of your mouth that goes directly into the microphone, by the way. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, so you said you never talked to her after that? No. Uh, I, that was a question I, I okay. do not know her name. If I All had right. to guess, right. Brenda. Now, if you knew her full name, you would have you said it on the air by now. <laughs> <laughs> her name was Jill Oganowski. <laughs> I don't know much, but I will tell you. Uh, <laughs> that woman's name was Adam Oganowski in a wig. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so sorry. So uh, let's let's back up to the sketch comedy show. Okay. What do you remember? Do you remember the content that was recorded in that dorm room that re- uh, that a bong drove you to? Just to I- tie it all back. <laughs> I remember that that bed I had in that room was weirdly high, and I yeah. tried to uh, bring my then girlfriend uh, in there, whose name we will say Hillary Higgins. If you need photography in Chicago, Hillary Higgins is your gal. Uh, and we, we both were drunk and we fell getting up onto it. So instead we went to her Mm. house. (laughs) I remember that. Oh, you just walked away. (laughs) We're just like, we're like, this is weird. You want to go to your house? She's like, yeah, I live two blocks away. Perfect. No two blocks. Yeah. Good. I'm liable to fall again if we try this. Yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. Is Justin going to be there? I respect, your commitment. I respect your commitment to giving up, Mike. You really, you really follow through and instantly come up with a backup plan. That's ex- Oh, my God. You have to when you're, you know. When- oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Man, um, shout out to my no, RA at the time, to- Justin Covington, who's a comedian, and he was my RA for that two weeks. Who was? Justin Covington. Do you ever met him? Oh, he, you know, yeah, yeah. I like Justin a lot. He would come and do Max. I think he's in New York City now. And from what I can tell, is is is, is having fun and doing well. He's killing it. Uh, he's killing it. Good. It's a good guy. He's a good dude. I like him. Yeah. I did not know that. I'm learning a lot about about uh, about your student days here. <laughs> a bong, huh? A bong played a big part in kind of your life in a way, right? It really uprooted where you lived. It oftentimes dictated <laughs> whether you slept at home or not. <laughs> It really the did. Was, that was a yeah, for the bed was too high, and I would go somewhere else <laughs> for two whole months. <laughs> it did that. I was scared of the bed like a child. <laughs> I know no one was there to tuck me in, so instead, yes. I went to my girlfriend's house just yes. so I could see her roommate's boyfriend, my best friend Justin Gowell. <laughs> Ah, that's right. I'm You're saying, gonna have him Skype in. You're gonna have him Google hang in. Uh, I think that'll be for a special number episodes. I want to try and keep these Skype ones light. Uh, Justin 100% needs to be on the show, but I, I I'd like to keep the Skype ones maybe once every ten. So uh, we'll revisit that in a in a couple months, and we'll get uh, Sweet Baby Jay on here because that old oh boy the. The, the stories that we have. You guys. Oh, you guys. I would just sit around you two and keep warm. <laughs> <laughs> we would talk <laughs> over each other. It wasn't just talking to each other. We would talk over each other enough that we would start a small brush fire. Uh, in the- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you two came and visited me out here in this dry desert, I might not live to tell about it. <laughs> we would send that place right the fuck up, Marky. <laughs> 
I'm going to run away and take my little hoop with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I forgot my hoop and stick. <laughs> you don't need it. Start a new life. You're lost <laughs> in America, too, now. <laughs> yes. You know what's great about Lost in America is, um, you know, it's like on its surface, it's a movie about them going across them, but like it just, their plan just blows up and then they just sort yeah. of, like, they don't make it far at all. They really, they go, like they start in LA and then they end up kind of in Arizona, right? They, yeah. Well, they just go to Vegas and lose their money yeah. and then they go past the Hoover Dam and then they stay, I think, some small place in Arizona, right? It's and then like at the Williams, end, they eat I think. Shit and go to New York. Yeah. It's right. like they go maybe. Eight hours? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then there's just like at the end when they go to New York, there's just a quick montage of them driving like across the country in the RV, which is kind of the premise of the movie. But yeah. again, it's just it's, it's a brilliant. It's one of my absolute favorite movies. I love um, Lost, in, Lost in America. I'd say uh, top five. The other four. Oh boy, thanks for asking, Mark. I'm gonna have to go with Space Jam, Space Jam, Good Burger, Space Jam, Lost in America. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people, man, people love it's an eclectic list you've got. Um, it really is. I like a lot of different films. So, okay, I've been trying to ask this question for ten minutes. <laughs> do you remember any of the sketches that we ended up recording? There's one specifically I do recall that I'll that I'll tell you about. There, I, was, uh, there was one where I w- I did my one at the time I could do a pretty decent Irish voice, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I was yelling about the bus. Someone did something on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> you're, I, just, I remember you're very, you're very warm. No, you're you're not wrong. It's just not, not not necessarily the whole picture. But yeah, you're definitely right there. I re- I so. just remember th- I remember one joke I said, which was okay. <laughs> it's like this. I said this guy doesn't follow bus law. <laughs> bus law was also a guy I went to grade school with, <laughs> and he came up with all the rules for the bus. <laughs> Yeah, I stand by that. <laughs> That's very funny. That's pretty funny. Pretty funny. That's I, I'm the stuff. MC Escher of shitty jokes. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. It's like I, yeah. I, I joked about all oh, the podcast was so. I was like, no, like honestly, there was some funny stuff there. Yeah, like there really not? was. That's, so, I mean, we it's just funny to me because you know the example I just was like, I can make stuff in outer space if I want to. Yeah, Mark, you could have. Do you know what we did? A bus driver talking <laughs> to a guy about to get on a bus. <laughs> <laughs> that was how far I took this. Anything goes premise. <laughs> but, we didn't even look <laughs> past the the fucking corner. <laughs> We could have made that easily with a real, you know, but uh, no. I know. I spent more time faking bus noises on the audio than. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, some of the premises, like, I, I, I pulled up and I think I, like, oh, you know, I asked the bus driver, I mean, and then, like, the door opened. And I think I was like, are you going to get on the bus? And then you, were you like, you didn't want to get on the bus because you were convinced a lot of people get ready for it, masturbate on it a lot. Oh, and you no. Just or, or something like that. You just assume not. I know what happens in those filthy places. Heathens, all of them getting on there and getting off their jollies. It was, yeah. that was, wow. That's where we ended up. And here's the great part about that. At that point, I had been doing comedy for about two years. And I could have went into any club in 2010, 2011, 2010, mm-hmm. uh, in New York, Chicago, or L.A. and heard any number of jokes about people jerking off on the bus. At that point, I had mm-hmm. only been on the Ann Arbor bus and the mm-hmm. <laughs> and the Michigan State bus. No, it's yeah. it's just college kids. No one's jerking off on either of those buses. But I knew. Yeah. Yeah. I was keen enough to know that buses mm-hmm. in the cities are for jerking it. You were wired to that. Yeah, you you definitely were locked in. I mean, look, it was clear who was going to make it from the day we got together and started joking about buses <laughs> yeah the guy who ripped off uh some jag off on live at gotham definitely <laughs> <laughs> Me, oh baby. man <laughs> there was some other good stuff though um do you remember uh jordan jordan jones uh that- yeah of course yeah yeah do you know about me this? And him, me, yeah, exactly. Me and him uh, were, were were good buddies at the time, and we uh, we recorded one. I remember, and it was like, um, I mean, this, there's probably some sketch out there that got to this too. I still think it's a great idea, but I'm, you know, you when you have that feeling, like, yeah, but this is probably. Well, out there do you want to say it on the on the air, or do you want to write it down and mail it to yourself? <laughs> I want. I would like to say it on the air if I could. Okay, well, please do. So it was like the the basketball team. This is a little bit more lofty of a premise. This is funny to me. That it was like the basketball team that was playing against uh, the team that Teen Wolf was on, <laughs> and it was and it was like their coach talking to him at halftime of that game. Yeah, <laughs> and just saying like, guys, how it all happened? We came out of the gate strong, but we're down twelve. What's going on out there? And the kids like, he's a fucking werewolf out there. <laughs> That's very funny. 
That's pretty funny. And just for whatever reason, our coach character, I got, I don't know if he didn't notice the werewolf or I think he just was like, oh, you're just making excuses. <laughs> <laughs> No, it'd, be there, hustle. it'd be funny if he was like, yeah, I get it. But like, you know, we got to play defense on him. Right. Just double team him. There's five of us out there. There's one wolf. We can't figure this out. Come on. We're bad to play high or whatever. The fuck. I want a case of beer. God. When was the last time you saw Teen Wolf? Um. Probably, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it within the last five years. Uh, you know, uh, somewhat recently. I'm a fan of it. It's an '80s comedy. There's some real troubling stuff that pops up, and uh, you know, uh, I, I sure wish that didn't happen. You know, but uh, it, it's also you know, there's a, there's a lot of good stuff in there. I think. You know what have I you, watch- have you seen it recently? No. Uh, do you know what I watched last night? What's that? Heat. I'm sorry. You say heat? Heat. It's good. <laughs> Heat with De Niro and uh, Al Pacino. Uh, don't stop there. You got Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer, Ashley Judd. Ashley I think uh, Judd? a young uh, Natalie, young Natalie Portman. Natalie right? Portman tries to off herself. Spoiler is there a, alert? Jer- Jeremy ooh, Pivens a, in it at the end. Dennis what, Haysbert. What Tom I'm Sizemore. Either, Danny I'll Trejo. Try to that, you fuck. <laughs> Sorry. I try to guess. I could tell. I knew it was either Tom Sizemore or one of the one of the thicker Baldwins. One of those. <laughs> one of the one of those, thicker Baldwins. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like those, those, those puffy ones that w- would show up, like they had a deal between them. Like one of us can do a movie a year. <laughs> so there's like, you know, I don't know. Please arrange your blood ones from thickest to fittest. It was Tom, it was Tom Sizemore though. It's Tom Sizemore, the king of the needle, Tommy Sizemore. <laughs> Does that mean he's like a good radio DJ? He loves it. He puts, he knows exactly. Here's the thing about Sizemore that no one ever appreciated. If you'd invite mm-hmm. him over to a party and you had a record player, Sizemore <laughs> could pick out any record, any record in your stack and know exactly where to drop the needle to play a specific song. And I think that's amazing. Yeah. I think that's I think great. Woo. <laughs> Hey. And once that song was playing, he would excuse himself. <laughs> I don't know what he'd do then. But <laughs> all I know is Jungle Land is 10 minutes long, and he know exactly where to drop that damn needle. Yeah. Yeah. The king, the king baby. The king. <laughs> He's the king. From, so anyways. from here on out, whenever I hear Tom Sizemore's name, which is probably, uh, probably about four times a day, I'm just going to mm-hmm. be like, ah, the king, Sizemore. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Point up in the air, in the air like he's dead. <laughs> is I think he is. Oh fuck! Is he is he with us anymore? Aaron, can you look up and whether or not Sizemore is still with us? He's still with us. He's still with us? Yeah. Sizemore, I'm gonna say this right now. I don't know if you're on social media. I don't know what you're doing. You have an open invite to come here and be on this podcast. I'd love to talk to you about your party days. Uh, I don't know what you were doing in the bathroom, but I really want to hear about how you would figure out which song to play on the records and where you drop the needle. I want to talk about that. You still alive, though? He's from Detroit, too. Oh, yeah, of course he is. Yeah, yeah. Sizemore also, Detroit boy. We'll talk about Corktown. We'll talk about Verners. We'll talk about the corner of Michigan and Trumbull. We'll talk about it all, Sizey. We're going to have a good time here in the Windy City, Sizemore. Me, you, and we're going to have a fucking good time. Also, Paul Rudd, still open invitation as well. Mark, just I heard that on your show. Uh, I think that's a very good program. That's a good idea that you have there. I, I think you should just open it up to like any any celebrity of a certain caliber ought to have a standing open invite. But also I get that if that, that dilutes <laughs> the sort of, it, it might appeal to Paul Rudd because it's just Paul Rudd. It's not like Paul Rudd can be like, oh, this guy will have any, any Avenger on. So no, do what you're doing. I think it's great. Yeah, yeah. Paul Sorry, Rudd, I had to talk my way through that. Yeah, yeah. Paul Rudd, number one with a bullet. That's who we want on here. Uh, this podcast is the real life version of a movie he made called I Love You, Man. Uh, that yeah, was that was I, his first ser- superhero movie where he was the titular I, I love you man. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Uh, you know what that movie does so well, and and Taylor and I laugh about it, and uh, Taylor, my wife, and I laugh about it, and also the show Thirty Rock did it well. Where like very few things capture like true awkwardness, but the way that just like he'll just like fuck up certain words or something. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh my God! But, uh, that Joe It really, really, it really is. Laugh. Yeah. That Joven, and, yeah, it's just such a perfect little moment. Oh man, yeah. that and <laughs> Fre- Freaks and Geeks does that so well as well. Yes. Where there's just like that yeah. long pause, and they're like, that's oh, the best. Yeah, of like not saying the you know, there's all these like nerdy characters that are so like well spoken and things all the time. 
and it just doesn't really ring that true. But like, you know what I mean? Like the endearing dorky character that's also yeah. like super witty and everything. There's room for all kinds of shit. But yeah, I, I just love it when when things like that are. Nice. I don't so know. I, I'd have I'd have him on my show if I were you, Paul Rudd. I don't know if I was talking about this to you or to my buddy Tony, but that's what I loved so much about Eighth Grade was that mm. the main character isn't like some slick. 13 year old like yeah. wit, like it's the most it's such a great performance and the directing is so fucking good in that movie and it's really a goddamn shame they didn't get nominated for best picture so i, I it's one of my favorite movies i've seen in a very long time yeah uh, and i think it was yeah, because like it. that dialogue is so awkward and those characters are so awkward and it just really captures uh how awkward uh it is to be in eighth grade and also yeah, to be yeah. 29 <laughs> Yeah, and 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 it is inter it's interesting as you know as as relatively young men you and I it is like it's interesting it's the same way like I relate to Dazed and Confused even though I went to high school in a different era but that captures a lot of like what I sort of felt like high school felt like yeah but then also it sort of against in that case the backdrop of uh, the 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 late seventies but now eighth grade it's like but now this is like oh yeah eighth grade sucked but then also like this is what it's like when they have to like practice school shootings and all this and this is yeah. where the reality is at now so yeah I love a good coming of age story that is uh, yeah is very much yeah, it's, it's great. I agree with you. Loved it. Definitely. All right. As much as I love to talk film, and that's what we do, Mark, we, me and you, we love talking film. But right now, no, we, we love to talk about one thing that turns into another thing. And then at the end, uh, the next day, I'll be like, fuck, I asked Mike five questions, and we talked about five things, and nothing got settled in any way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, at one point, I asked him how this was going, and then we started uh, talking about the movie Big. Yeah. And then we ended up doing a Marky Ramone character, and then one of us fell asleep. I don't, yeah, I don't know. And I still don't know whether or not his dad's alive. <laughs> exactly and how do you ask not on the air yeah of course not yeah uh anyway we gotta we gotta we gotta move into the next portion of the show mark yeah is I, the introduction I, over okay <laughs> kind of yeah <laughs> we gotta get down to brass tacks we gotta get down to business we gotta see whether or not you are baloney boy material you're our first married guest on the show so you you, oh, had, right. okay. you had a wedding uh that mm -hmm. you invited uh no one to <laughs> But not true. Not that's true. Not true. Parents, I know your parents, parents are there. Yeah. A couple of sets of parents in the room. Our our dear friend Matt Erickson uh, officiating it. Is that yeah. what he he refereed it? He refereed uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he was he moonlight. He also works at Foot Locker, so we had the shirt. We had him yeah. come in. <laughs> yep. He has been ordained by the NHL. <laughs> <laughs> he wore the helmet. It was very good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But you, you had a very small ceremony, which I think is a, a great uh, – it was great. It was perfect for you guys because you, you guys uh, just do you. You're the most unique couple uh, out there, I think, and it was a very good ceremony for you guys. I have a feeling if, uh, if all goes to plan, that's not going to be the situation. I'm going to have to blow this fucker out, and I need some help. I need, to, I need some good baloney boys. They're going to help me blow this fucker out. <laughs> I know you say baloney, but do you say you have to blow it out every time? Uh, this is the first time I said blow it out. <laughs> I gotta blow this fucker out. <laughs> I gotta blow this fucker out. Amazing. All right. Oh, God. Um, all right. I'm sorry that I don't come from a more exciting petty. Like, as your first married guest, I'm sorry I can't give you, like, here's how I did it, because it's the exact opposite of what this show is aiming for. Yeah, but you, yeah, but you did, after you got married, you did uh, run away from home. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, that's right. Everything. Like yes, yes. Of Everything stamps. we didn't want to face. That's right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you, 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 you yeah, did, packed up in that town. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you did fucking leave like a couple thieves in the night. That's not, no, you guys. That's right. Barely say goodbye. We'll never be back. Yes, yeah. go on. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, Mark, I need you to do me a favor, a solid. I need you to uh, plan my bachelor party, bitch. Sorry. Oh, oh, man. Um, so, uh, man, can I preface this by saying I don't want the gig? <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> That's the most, it's one of the most common things that's come up the last couple of episodes. We'll be like, yeah, I'll like do this. Episodes and done. Yeah. <laughs> I should have had them by now. But <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> everybody's like, yeah, I, I, uh, I I'm going to be really bad at this. And I'm like, you know who else is going to be bad at it? Me. So here we sure. go. <laughs> 
No, and I want you to understand that it's not that I don't think I could perform the duties well. It's not that I'm not honored or wouldn't be honored. It's not that I don't love you. I just, uh, I just like, I want to hang out with my wife. And then that like just <laughs> kind of, screws, it screws the whole thing up. You know what I mean? Yeah, honestly. I know. Uh, I get it, man. So if, if, if you got room for Taylor, we could talk about that. But I don't want to put that on you. But, but that being said, uh, I, I, I will play ball. I, 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 uh, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks for going along yeah. with it. So I can play in the bachelor party. Now I know obviously this is, this is just make them ups, but, but in this, like, is money an issue? Like, can I fly no. you out to me? Do I fly out to you or, so, or you know what I mean? There's three can things. We, can we, can we do something crazy? Like wait for a bus. <laughs> <laughs> there's, three, crazy as get. there's three things that are important when doing this money, not an issue. Uh, okay. pro- location, not an issue. Um, We're dreaming big here. Whether or not I actually would enjoy it, not, really an issue either go on <laughs> so could i ask what my, you know what no let's just do this um well i think because we haven't seen each other in a while it'd be nice to like you know do it in person uh <laughs> that's my first idea okay not yeah, over uh, <laughs> how about this can i sorry i have to get sidetracked i just really want to i really do my best here uh having not heard every episode of your show what is the gang up to now? How many, what, what kind of pass or fail? Like has a lot of people made it or are you being pretty, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty strict on those? Thank you for asking. No one's made it yet, Mark. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So just the one plane ticket. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go find a nice bus to jerk off on somewhere. Okay, cool. <laughs> Wherever we are when it kicks us out, there's the party. Okay. Uh, we would find something fun to do. Like, I would love to have you come out to Tucson. I would hope it would be like a really like, like, like this time of year or, uh, when it's really shitty and cold so that you really appreciate that more. Yeah. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna have you over, uh, and, uh, we can go, I can go show you the sites. We can take you back to that dude ranch. That's what we're doing. I just found it. We're going back to the dude ranch, Mike. <laughs> Fantastic. Is, uh, uh, is Brenda, what's your face going to be there? <laughs> she actually... Um, do you remember uh, when you were young, there was a teacher of the ballroom class? Yeah. Well, now that we're all 10, 20 years older now, uh, Brenda is dead and someone else teaches the class. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, That's yeah, good. I know. I thought you, you probably thought I was going to say the teacher of the class, but I just wanted to drop that in there. No, okay, we're going to have in the big thing, instead of a ballroom, we're going to have modified ballroom dancing. Um, it's funny that it came up. I didn't want to build the lid off this. But uh, Tom Sizemore is actually teaching the class. <laughs> Fantastic. I get so to we're touch going to the dude ranch. The... Me, you, and your father, I think, is all we really have so far. But <laughs> my that's dad, probably fine, honestly. Uh, my dad doesn't uh, want to go. <laughs> my dad will be that? there, but my dad will be there, but he doesn't want to go. <laughs> Are you going to have your dad on the show at some point to see if he wants to be in your in your wedding party? What a question. Uh, a couple people have actually asked me that recently. Um, mm-hmm. If that does happen... Uh, There's a couple things that have to go into it. Uh, We record on the third floor of a building and there's no elevator. And that's a problem for him. Uh, Number two, I think he will be very thrown off by the very idea of what podcasting is. Uh, Yeah, very fair. (laughs) Number three, not a terribly funny man. I don't Mm -hmm. think we're going to have him. (laughs) That's tough. You'll still find something in the wedding, though, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, he's going to DJ it. (laughs) Hell yeah. So there it is. It's just going to be me and you ballroom dancing while Tom Sizemore and your dad do like a dueling DJ set. I love it. I love it. This is me, this is me trying not to get the gig. I'll fly you out here to dance with me, Mikey. <laughs> That's the sweetest thing anyone's ever said to me. Just two hours of ballroom dancing. Hey, come home. What kind of, what kind of music can you ballroom dance to? Is that like, what would you say is the music that goes the, with that? All the songs kind of sound like this. La da 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 dee la da 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 dee da 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 la da 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 dee da 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 dee do da da la da 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 dee do da dee do da da la da 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 dee da 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 dee dee da dee do yeah smack that ass. I think that's most of the dancing songs. Speaking of music, the next question, Mark. Yeah. When it comes to music at a wedding, what are your DJ no nos and what are your DJ yes pleases? Okay, we did talk about this some with 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 Taylor and I taking the path we did to uh, marriage. You know, we couldn't help but discuss. You know, at some point, like, oh, if we did do it this way, what then would come up? Or you know what I mean? So, 
Yeah, this, I, I, I apologize. This comes up a lot. This almost feels like a hacky one, but no chicken dance. That thing is the thing's no good. Okay, we need to we need we need to quit pretending that 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 should that should live on generation after generation. That's, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Has that come up on the show before? I, no, the chicken dance, but what it really is, what I think people really don't like at weddings is uh, a structured dance. A forced participation. A forced part, like the, say, say for the YMCA. YMCA still very cool, very fun. Uh, very fun to stay. <laughs> very fun to stay. It's fun to stay there. Uh, you can get yourself clean. You can get a good meal. You can do what you want to feel. I, I'm uh, listening. Go on, young man. <laughs> uh, but like ch- the most common ones are like Cupid <laughs> Shuffle, Cha Cha Slide, Macarena, Chicken Dance. No one wants to to be. In a in a in a rectangle and have to do something. Yeah, it's the rectangle, and it's like <laughs> it's the re- it is the rectangle. It's a big deal. <laughs> no, I think you know, and, and look, maybe I'm just like the cynical asshole because clearly people do enjoy that. But it is just like you know, I don't, I don't want to. If I want to dance, it's because I've had too many drinks at the open bar. I want that to be the reason, or whatever. Not just like oh, it's just, like a, a wedding reception can be the most fun in the world because it's like this great party where all these people are on all these different wavelengths and you can sit and talk to the family for a while or they're they're getting smashed over here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's like you said, suddenly a conga line goes by and then I don't. Yeah. And then I might go keep my conversation with my aunt. And we never finish it. You know what I mean? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's ex- I, so, And I think you really kind of nail uh, zoned in on something that I really like about it where it is like when you go to a party, there, of course, there's going to be a bunch of different conversations. When you go to a wedding, it's not just a bunch of different conversations. It's a bunch of different people from a bunch of different points in their life and it is kind of like a shared thing with everybody in the uh in the ceremony and in the reception like oh this is uh we're all here for the same reason but you know you're a banker you're a fucking you know yeah you're you're tom sizemore you're paul rudd we're all different but we're all here for the same reason and that's and maybe free past apps free past apps maybe I have a feeling now because I'm, I'm 34. I get that I'm not over the hill, but I'm also certainly clearly my 20s are are, are, are well and over and everything else, you know. So you, it, maybe I have a feeling about it because you just get to the certain point where it's like those things are like a line in the sand. And like when you stop being in the conga line, now you're just like yeah. talking to someone about like what kind of trucks you want to buy or whatever people talk about. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like it's just usually what be. kind of trucks they want to buy. <laughs> You're going to be sitting there talking to the, the middle-aged uncles about what kind of trucks we buy. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. I don't fit in with either group, so I don't like that. Yeah. For, I, like, I, like, I like everything to have its natural, uh, uh, you know, little little pockets formed and everything else. And then you can just find what works for you. Not like, hey, great news. They're playing the Macarena. I don't know. <laughs> cool, man. But the, you know what I'm saying? Let's get back to punk rock. No rules, man. That's the rule. No, yeah. no hits. No yeah. hits. Nothing over two and a half minutes. Anarchy. Uh, so mm-hmm. the, the next one we have, we have uh, your uh, this this wedding that you don't want to be a part of. Uh, you're, yeah, that one. Yeah. You're also you're going to be the head of security, and there's going to be okay. there's I got a rowdy family. They yeah, a rowdy definitely. family, and there's mm-hmm. there might be some some trouble at the ceremony. So we're going to do a okay. thing. Uh, stuff, yeah. Where I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna interrupt, and then you're gonna, you're gonna shut me down. I'm gonna heckle the wedding, and you're gonna this shut me down. You're not you. You're a family member, a, a disgruntled guest, a, 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 has, a, a former lover, a jilted lover. I'm gonna be who uh, I am. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you who I am now. I'm gonna try and remember how to do that Irish voice from the oh, yeah. podcast we did a bunch of years you ago. Did, you did a funny bit where you gave him a bunch of names like Flannery O'Hannigan, O'Malley. You know, like there was you had a bunch of so if that helps you. I don't know. Do, nah, do a bunch of I'm names. I'm not gonna do that. Don't this, do that. Um, this guy's going to be named Steve. And so, I'm sorry, so this is during the ceremony or this is during the chicken dance? The ceremony. Thank you. All okay, right. here we go. Count us in. I want to. <laughs> Count it up. Hey, what are you doing? This is not, it's a different voice because I can't do an Irish accent anymore. And I die, how you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Hello, sir. The ceremony's actually already started. I'm just going to have to ask if you're with the bride or the groom and we'll find you your seat. I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with, I'm oh, with myself. Uh, sorry, I forget. I'm also an usher in addition to being the you're best man in the security guard. Uh, you're sorry. not usher. Uh, the windows to the walls, you're not usher. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not usher. You're right. I'm not usher. <laughs> you're never going to be usher. Are you one of Mike's uncles? No. <laughs> Okay, we'll see. I've been talking, and now we're just having a chat. Sham sixty nine. 
That's pretty amazing. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, man. And oh, yeah. Have you heard of the- oh, yeah. I love. At, yeah, fuck it. You can be as loud as you want here. I don't mind. Hey, have you heard of a website called The Hard Times? I think you'd like it a lot. Oh, yeah. It. What is it? Is it like um, people with boners looking at their watches? It's a lot of that. It's a lot of people with boners looking at their watches, but also <laughs> like... Uh, <laughs> Hey, do you want to go outside and keep talking about this website, or, or oh, yes, go outside. Let's go outside and talk about the website. Oh, do you like web? Do you like a lot of websites, or just that one, or what? Oh, I love it. It's about Spider Man, right? Uh, yeah. No, let's go. Let's just, just just one or two more steps. Are we out? We're out. And then look, we're outside talking. Me and the singer Sham. Do you hear that? The singer Sham sixty nine came and tried to interfere. Yeah. Seconds later, we're talking about websites outside. That's that, what I bring to the table. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty great. Mm-hmm. Good job, mm-hmm. Marky. You really took down Jimmy Percy of Sham sixty nine. Yeah, the easiest part was when I just decided to make him walk out of there in my <laughs> my little mental exercise. It was great stuff. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, how do you how do you think I did though? Enough about what I what I brought to it. What you did I do? Okay, oh, you did wonderful. That was fantastic. What did Brad Wenzel say to the singer of Shame Sixty Nine? Or is it a different it, character? I, I, don't, I don't remember what I did. I think I did like a Southern guy. I don't know. Brad was just like, okay. "This is I I shouldn't have done this." <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, there's there's a couple things we got to do before I make you do my best man speech, and I and I and I bring down my ruling from on high, or whether or not you're gonna blow this fucker out. The first thing, it has come time. Uh, this is a very famous segment on the show. Everyone loves it. Got to do the ASMR minute. So here we go. We are doing the ASMR minute now. Here's the ASMR minute. We are talking in low tones. Aaron is handing me some Velcro, and I will now do a Velcro thing. Can I do, can I do anything? Or should is I just, should anything I ASMR related that you'd like? Anything that you think will give a creep the tingles? I got a little, I got a, here, how about this? I got a stand, a can of steel reserve right here. Is that coming through at all? Oh, I hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just make sure you're talking like low. Like a little, um, low hush ASMR. Like a little metal heartbeat. A little metal heartbeat. All right, cool. And that was the ASMR Minute. Thank you very much. And thanks to our new sponsor, Steel Reserve. Not just for homeless people anymore. All right, thank you. <laughs> no, I kind of have a home now. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Steel Reserve is the fucking oof. How do you do? Did you get a headache from it? No, no. Here's the thing. So as we talked about, we're gonna I'm gonna have some more beers uh, when we're recording here because we have a wrestling show to watch, don't we? Uh, <laughs> But um, here's how there, here's the drinker I've aged into a little bit. I don't, you know, I'm not, not really doing stand up anymore, so I don't really like that. Was obviously just at bars all the time and stuff. So really, it's like if it's a night to have drinks, generally it'd just be me and my wife uh, while a program we want to watch is coming on, right? You know, to kind of paraphrase a bit of yours, uh, <laughs> or shows. Do you say shows, programs? What word do you use? My bit that I like. I have no idea what you're talking about anymore. <laughs> Uh, you guys will do the sex thing to each other, and then we will watch oh, our, or, uh, our shows. Watch our, yeah, come on. Our shows. Yes, yes, yes. Our shows. That is one of my show f- coming on. famous uh, bits. <laughs> so good. I like that a lot, Mike. Thanks, um, buddy. <laughs> nah, yeah, just the others. Nah, but keep that one. Uh, <laughs> Uh, sorry, what am I doing? Um, <laughs> I don't but no, actually, so, so, so I've got like the I've got the case of Miller High Life that we're gonna dip into. But you know, what I like to do I like to buy myself a fun one to start. Do you do that ever? I do that. I do. Here's what you should try. You should try the Red's Wicked Apple Ale. Okay, that's a good one. That's the kind of stuff. Yeah, because I was gonna say. Yeah. So I have the tall- highlight, and not that I don't enjoy it, but you yeah. know. I have a tall can of the steel. It sounded cool on the radio. Said, oh, steel Reserve, oh, fucking facial hair. Look at me. But yeah. this is Steel Reserve, the spiked punch. Uh, so, oh, there yeah, you go. Is- yeah, the the Red's Wicked Apple is like eight point five, and it comes in one of those yeah, big, is- one of those big tall cans. It's a fun one to start with. And here's the yeah, what I like what about yeah. it. It's a little. It's apple, so it's a little tart, and you get a little bit of that. A little bit of that. It makes you call a horse. A little, to yeah. You. yeah, yeah. It makes it, you make a horse come here. It's not the kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, the beer that makes you ride a horse. Yeah. <laughs> Save a horse, drink a red apple ale. Uh, but no, I was. I thought we were doing video. I thought you would enjoy that. I got it sticking out of my Michael Keefe uh, koozie. But oh, do you? Oh, enough. hey, Sorry. Michael Keefe koozies. I tell you what, if you're listening out there and you've made it to this point in the show, don't know how you would have done that. Uh, send me your multiple idiots a tweet. I'll mail you one of these koozies. I have a fucking shitload of them left. And I don't want them anymore because I don't uh, like bringing them around. But I'll give you a total shithead koozie if you uh, if you tweet at me. I don't care. I'll do it. I got time. 
You're a koozie. Thank it's you. a great koozie. It does the job. It says a funny swear word. I love it. Yeah. Uh, it's funny that it's Stew Reserve. I don't know if you knew this, and like I've I've, I've drank these from time to time. There's a Stew Reserve alloy series where Ooh. they really tried to like brand it, but it's someone. Like, hey man, you, you you try these alloys? I just don't feel like that's something that is gonna nope. catch on. I'm Not excited, at all. But nope. <laughs> So yeah, I'm glad you relate to that though. That's where I'm at though. I'm on, I'm on my start season right now. My little fruit punch that I like to have. <laughs> there you go. All right. The, then the other segment we have to do our other weekly segment, they're all weekly segments, but we got to do this. I got to do the Bane impression of the week. So if you just give me a little, give me a hot second here there, Marky, and I will do the Bane yeah. impression of the week. Here we go. Okay. Hey, what's up? Uh, is this, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Bane and, uh, is it, is this HR or is HR? Thank you. That was my Bane impression of the week. Appreciate that. This time, Bane was looking for HR. <laughs> That's very good. That's really good, Mike. Thanks, man. It's movie <laughs> real. <laughs> awesome. Okay, Mark, you've been fantastic. This has been such a blast. Any opportunity to bullshit with one of my oldest friends in the world. Uh, I've known Mark uh, for six months, but he is 183 years old. He's my <laughs> oldest friend in the world. <laughs> <laughs> not one part of that was true. Not, the age, not, the time, our friendship. <laughs> what the fuck is this fucking piece of shit? Cuck sucking piece of shit. I'm fucking tired. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for going on here. Uh, it has come to the time in that show where I need you to do me a solid. I need you to give my best man speech. Then after that, I will render my verdict in the case of the people versus the baloney boys versus mark roebuck a rare triple threat legal case <laughs> all right we're gonna have greg Wait. the <laughs> our foley artist come in greg if you'd like to <laughs> greg you, I, you come in here every fucking week and you're always trying to talk and it's weird because i don't care you keep inviting him in i've been listening <laughs> no but he knows he's a foley artist he's not a fucking yeah, conversationalist you're right. You're right. I wanted to you're talk. Out, you're, out of, you're, out, you're out of line, Greg. He's right. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate that. All right. And of course, Greg does have headphones on. So he heard uh, you demolishing him from, you know, 2000 miles away. Anyway, here we go. Greg, get that. Proceed, Marcus. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Hey, guys. Uh, thank you for coming out to uh, the wedding. I have a few <laughs> announcements they wanted me to make. Uh, <laughs> next week, Jeff Foxworthy is going to be here, everybody. <laughs> Jeff Foxworthy and this great banquet hall. Anybody that Jeff Foxworthy? It's going to sell out, but there are plenty of tickets. Check it out. They're almost gone. Um, <laughs> also, just because I fear time is running out on this uh, 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 endeavor, I just would like to tell Mike and uh, Mallory's family and friends that I do have a new podcast that I'm excited about, <laughs> everybody. We'll plug um, it after. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, again, to the singer of Sham 69, I'm going to have to ask you to keep your outburst to a minimum. All right, sorry, sorry. But thank you for reminding me that there's time to plug things afterwards. In that case, I'll get right on to it. What are we doing here? We're celebrating. We're celebrating love. We're celebrating the end of Mike's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been, uh, most of us in here have done it, but clearly I'm the only one that passed the test as evidence. <laughs> By his one man party who had to officiate the wedding, call the penalties, <laughs> do the ushing. I made it, goddammit. And you didn't. Suck my dick. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. I love you. Is that it? Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> That's like, listen. Just, just kind of average. Just kind of the most, you know, I just wanted to just like hit all the basic, you know. Parts. I mean, all the best. Uh, best man speeches have absolutely nothing to do with the bride and groom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. not like you've never met Mal. We've like worked weekends together. You've been to yep. the house. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Stayed over. Yep. Very good time. Yep. Talked about ER. Yep. I yep. love it. Oh mm -hmm. man. I, uh, mm -hmm. so it's time, mm -hmm. the time mm -hmm. has come mm -hmm. for me to bring down my verdict the same way that Moses brought down the 10 commandments. From that big old fucking hill. Yeah, I did kind of blow that fucker out though. You gotta, you gotta. You <laughs> listen. You go. blew that fucker out like it was your goddamn birthday on October eighteenth, two days after mine. It's pretty erect. You're right on that. You're very, you're very right. A few years earlier though. Not. Um, what are you? Are you an eighty nine? You're eighty nine. Yeah. Let me finish. Okay. <laughs> I was, I was born I in nineteen fourteen. <laughs> What was it 
it like? I can't believe we didn't even touch about how you're a uh, hundred and four, five years old, four years old. Yeah. You think uh, I was going to make it up those three flights? Get out of here. Yeah. You must've been in world war two. What was that like? Uh, honestly, pretty good for a sequel. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Believe Mark <laughs> said that joke every single fucking Mac show ever. Uh, all right. So, Marcus Aurelius Roebuck, you, you're not going to be in. You're, you didn't make it. You're not going to be one of the baloney boys. Yeah. You, oh my God, you, so you've awesome. seen Teen Wolf 2 recently. I can't have that energy around. No, no, no. I didn't see Teen Wolf 2 recently. I saw Teen Wolf 1 recently. <laughs> <laughs> uh well you know yeah. you got the wrong guy i haven't seen that boxing one in forever <laughs> uh <laughs> i love the idea of know, teen yeah. wolf boxing while the boxer by bob dylan or the hurricane by bob dylan plays <laughs> the boxer by simon the garfunkel would have been <laughs> pistol shots rang out and it's just a werewolf boxing <laughs> yeah all right buddy <laughs> thank you so much for doing this I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, man. It was a lot of fun. I'm so glad we made this work. I'm so glad uh, that you guys are kicking ass out there. I'm so glad the website's doing well, and you guys got a new podcast. Tell me about this podcast you guys are doing over there. Oh, so, uh, yeah, as, as you mentioned at the top there, there's the the Hard Times, which is a punk rock-themed uh, satirical website. Uh, me and some other talented folks uh, spun off Hard Drive a couple years ago, which is like the video game slash sort of nerd culture uh, 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 branch of it. And so now the Hard Times has launched a Patreon podcasting network. There's a Hard Times podcast show, which is uh, Bill and Matt, who started the Hard Times and continue to run it. Um, they are just doing a different interview. I don't know if you've checked it out, but they've had like Brian Baker and cool. uh, Frank Turner on the first few episodes. They're really, uh, there's some really big ones coming up too that I'll, I'll say no more about, but just it's a good one to keep an eye on. And so over on the in the nerdy corner of the website, uh, my buddy and the editor in chief, Jeremy, and I, uh, are doing what's called the Super Mario Bros. Super Show Show. Mike, do you know the Super Mario Bros. cartoon from 1989 starring uh, famous uh, professional wrestling manager Captain Lou Albano? Wait, what? <laughs> no shit. Yeah. I didn't realize he was that. That's fucking insane. I only know about the yeah, show so because of you uh, asking me if this is a good idea for a podcast, you doing it, and me being like, I have not listened to it yet. But that sounds amazing, and I'm going to, uh, this, this sounds great. I'm subscribed already. I'm going to start listening to those good. boys. Do it. It's, we do one episode per real episode of thing. The stuff it's all on Netflix. The Super Mario Bros. Super Show show. Or no, that's our show. I fuck up the name every time. <laughs> yeah, the Super Mario Bros. Super Show. Too many words. Yeah. The Super Mario Bros. Super Show is on Netflix. It's on YouTube. Do whatever you want. Watch it, and then each of our episodes are just titled whatever the episode itself of the show was called. No inside joke titles for us, baby. It's we're just, going. We're keeping it to the source. It's just, I talk like you after I've been talking to you for a while. It's you know tough not to. Uh, who's yeah. who's and who's your co-host? Jeremy Kaplowitz, who uh, is the editor in chief of Hard Drive, also uh, you know he was at Hard Times before we started that. He did the Lizard People of New York website. He's uh, very talented, very funny Brooklyn comic. Oh, nice, cool, very cool. Uh, and, and so yeah, so every week we get together and we talk about uh, a different episode of the Mario Bros. Super Show, which is bonkers. And uh, and also with Lou uh, being Mario, uh, definitely called in a lot of professional wrestling favors for their star-studded cameos. So if you ever want to see Sergeant Slaughter mixed up with Mario and Luigi, have I got the show for you, buddy? That's all I want to see now. <laughs> that is the only thing I can think of. It will keep me up at night. Marky, Malarkey, Buckwagon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fart slow fuck, my my boy. <laughs> this could be a whole different episode. I just like, just, can we just do an hour sometime yeah, of names we call each other? Or? Every once in a while, when we haven't talked in a while, I will just text you farty slows, and you know that it's. it's Mark, my, bro, I just I've never had more AKAs than when yeah. me and you just like <laughs> end the interview or conversation, and it's like Mark Roebuck, AKA R O E Buckwagon, AKA Fart Slow Fuck, AKA Farty Slows. It goes on. Thank you so much. Love you, buddy. We'll talk soon. Okay. Thank you, bud. I love you. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Thank you for listening in for another episode. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much. Follow us at Multiple Idiots on Instagram and Twitter. I'm at the Mike O'Keefe. Thank you so much. Till death do us fart. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>